right. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of Woke by Accident Podcast. Today we have a special guest, Portia Mystique Steele, CEO of Mystique Rose Publishing Services, LLC. I came to meet Portia when I was a guest on the Motivational Motives Podcast. So we're so glad to have Portia back on this show, on my show, to tell us about the Mystique Rose Publishing Services, LLC, and how you guys can get started writing that book that you've always wanted to. Welcome to the show, Portia. Thank you. I'm so happy. You know, I love you and I love this show, so I'm so glad you got me back on Yes, thank you. So tell us about Mystique Rose Publishing. I know that you were kind of behind the scenes working on book editing and now you have Mystique Rose Publishing, so. Yes, it was a journey. Uh, Yeah, so I started as a freelance editor and writer years ago. I think it's been almost 10 years now. And um, I kind of transitioned into book publishing when one of my clients was working on a book and I was called on to be the editor for his book. And he was like, okay, I edited it. And he was like, okay, what do I do now? I was like, I don't know, publish it. What do you want me to tell you? <laughs> like I edited it, it's done, I did my job. Mm. And he was like, well, can you help me? And I'm like, no, I don't, I don't know how to publish. I only know how to edit. Like that's what I do. I edit and I write, I can't publish. And he was like, please, like you do such a good job. I love working with you. So can you help me publish? I was like, fine. So I took some courses. I got a couple of mentors. I did a whole bunch of research and I learned how to publish a book so I could publish his. And after I published his book, I called him up and told him like, congratulations, your book is live. He just started crying. I was like, oh my God, like, cause I helped you like me, like what? So um, after that, I was like, I have to do this. Like if I I love what I do so much. Like I love reading, but being a part of an author's story, being a part of that transition into authorship, I don't even know how to put it in words. Like it is everything. And so being able to bring those books to life, I'm in my dream job, Jen. Like this is, I feel so blessed to be doing exactly what I want to be doing and I'm helping people in the process. I'm making people happy. I'm allowed, I'm, I'm making their dreams come true. And it's just, it's such a blessing. So that's right. what the sequel publishing is all about. That's awesome. Thank you. Awesome. And then I love how your company, Trinity, to self-publish, learn about the business, and you always advocate for them so that they're not taken advantage of so exactly. that they're not taken advantage of. You always advocate for them. Mm-hmm. Definitely, because like like I said, you know, I started working with authors closely. So some of the authors that I work with have actually become members of my family. Like Laquan Johnson, he is the author of Motivational Motives. But yes. I met him through helping him publish his book. That's how we met. And he's like, okay. he's my big brother now. He is my big brother now. So it's just like, yeah, there's so many different people that I met and I helped them and they become a part of my family. So advocating for them is like advocating for a sibling. It's like, mm. these are my people, you know what I mean? So their book is my book. Their, their success is my success. And so that passion, that love is there. And so I'm always trying to make sure that authors get their due. Like the entire book publishing process is not an easy one. It, it's a mm-hmm. treachery path, a treacherous path, but you have to have the right person holding your hand and walking you mm-hmm. through it. And so that's what Mystique Rose Publishing, that's what we do. We take the book from beginning all the way to the end and beyond. So um, going through that process and seeing the transformation in these individuals, it's like, I'll be damned if somebody comes along and to hurt these people that I love, like this is my family. So. I'm always, always advocating for authors. That's awesome. And then are you seeing that scamming and, you know, traps are out there for people in the publishing oh. industry? Yes. Okay. It is so, the industry is so saturated with scammers and con artists that it makes it really hard for authors to trust anybody. Oh. I would say a good portion of my authors have been scammed before even coming to me. 
So they were okay. already burned. And it was through having a conversation with me that they realized, oh, there are some legitimate people out there that want to help me tell my story. And we're not just trying to get you money. I mean, the, oh my God, the, some of the stories that I've heard from different authors, like one woman, she spent thousands, thousands of dollars into this one company, quote unquote, that said that they were going to publish her book for her and get it on Amazon and do all this and do all that. She didn't get nothing out of it. Mm-hmm. She didn't get nothing out of it. I mean, yeah, it, in some companies, and we call them vanity press. They will take money and they will go through the whole process of publishing your book. But by the time you get it, you're like, what is this? It's just from something that was thrown together. They, they claimed to put it on Amazon and they did, but maybe like the blurb is bad. Okay. The, like it's just a mess. It's a mess. And so you funnel thousands into a project like that. And the end result is something that you don't even want to look at. Mm. Yes. Scammers are out there. Wow. And so what are some things that writers should take notice of so that they don't fall prey to these um, cons and such? Oh, girl. So I think the biggest red flag Mm -hmm. is when somebody says that they're going to help you and they don't tell you how. Uh, A lot of authors fall for that because it sounds good when you use words like ISBN and formatting and KDP and, you know, like royalties and revenue. We start throwing those words around. It sounds like you know what you're talking about. So people will fall into that. They're like, oh, okay, this is definitely somebody who's in the industry. This is an expert. No, it's not. You don't know that for sure. And so a lot of authors tend to not ask questions. And I always, always, always recommend authors, you need to interview the people that you're working with. They're not necessarily interviewing you. You need to interview them. So if you're going to give your book to somebody and ask them to help you with it, you need to ask questions like, number one, who's getting the ISBN? Is it mine or is it yours? Okay, Mm -hmm. ISBN stands for International Standard Book Number. That is the book number that you see at the top of the barcode or when you open a book, you just see like that 10 or 13 digit number inside. That ISBN shows all of the metadata for the book, but also the owner, the the publisher that owns that ISBN. So if you're working with a company that said that they're going to help you and they tell you that they're going to own the ISBN or they're going to purchase the ISBN, run away. Because that means they're going to own your book. Okay. If that's not what you want, hey, it could be what you want. You might not care. But if you, if we're talking specifically about self-publishing, Right. And you were looking to help have somebody help you self-publish and they're going to provide your ISBN, mm-mm, run away. If they're not willing to tell you exactly what that process looks like, run away. That was one of the first things I do on a call. When I have a consultation, I'm like, look, we use Trello. This is the process. Step one is editing. We do so many rounds of editing. I'll tell you who's going to be doing the editing, who on my team is going to be doing what. Then we move into formatting. This is what this is going to look like. And then I like to give information. Like, here are things that you need to think about. Here are things that you need to decide on. You know, I'm very transparent. I'm very open. But a scammer is not going to be open to that because they don't know. They they don't care about all that stuff that's going to go into it. There's a lot of work that goes into it. A scammer is not going to care about that. They're just going to be like, okay, we'll take your book and we'll put it on Amazon. And this is how much you owe. What? No, no, no. You didn't Mm -hmm. tell me how does it work? What is the process? How long is it going to take? What do I need to do? What are you going to do? Do never be afraid to ask those questions. And if anybody seems to have an attitude or a problem with answering those questions, Mm -hmm. you can just, you can just be like, okay, time to end the call. Thank you for your time. I'm leaving. Yeah. Okay. That is good to know. And then you mentioned Amazon. So what is your opinion of the process of going through Amazon for publishing? (laughs) Okay, so it's funny that you mentioned that because we're actually working on a guide right now that Mm. is going to show you the pros and cons of the top 10 different publishing platforms. So of course, Amazon is like number one. That is the one that everybody wants to go through because it's the easiest and it's free. I don't, there aren't too many other publishing platforms that has a user interface as sweet as Amazon. But the only thing is Amazon takes such a huge chunk of money. Mm -hmm. Like in order for you to make even a decent 
royalty amount, you're probably you're gonna have to sell your book for less than $9.99. And nowadays, most people don't. They sell their book for like $14.99 or up. That's a standard novel size for a print book. Um, but when you do that, you're only getting like 30%. So there is a strategic method as to why you see books priced at $2.99 or even for free sometimes. Exactly. See, when you see a book, uh, an ebook specifically, that's mm -hmm. for free on Amazon, that's because the author signed up for Kindle Select. So mm -hmm. with that, Amazon is essentially like giving the author an opportunity to get their book out there, to get it in front of people. So you could just download it for free and, and it's cool. Some people use free, free eBooks or the digital version as a way to just, you know, pick up a little, generate a, a, some leads and really get their name out there and things like that. But Two ninety nine is really cheap. <laughs> right. You know, like, for an ebook, that's fine, but you're not selling. You're not selling a print book for no two ninety nine. But yeah, with an ebook, two ninety nine is fine because most people don't splurge on ebooks. So you want to definitely be competitive, but also be smart. And when you're when you're publishing through KDP, you also have to factor in how much they're taking out. Right. They're gonna they're gonna take out a nice chunk, and then what's left? You yeah. know, now first, like I have a family member that wrote a children's book and it actually has sold out on Amazon. So people who are like doing well on Amazon, they're making a little money or is it still just hard because they take so much that 60% or what have you? Um, here's the thing. When people publish to Amazon, that's probably not the only thing they're doing. You can't make mm -hmm. a living selling books on Amazon unless you're like Stephen King or something. You need to be doing other stuff, maybe selling from your website, maybe you're doing pop-up events, maybe you're selling locally, maybe your book is in schools or in libraries or in local stores, or you did a book signing, you're doing a book tour, you're a motivational speaker, you're a podcast host, you're doing, you know, you end up at, um, being, becoming, excuse me, becoming a published author is just the beginning. It's, mm -hmm. It often serves as a segue into something else. It always, almost always opens up the door for opportunity. So I have yet to work with an author that just stopped at being an author. We just, we published a book and that was all they did. Almost every author I've worked with have gone on to do something else. Some of them are life coaches, motivational speakers, podcast hosts, like it, it becomes something else. It, it was just the beginning, just the beginning. So um, when you are publishing to KDP, you're not getting a lot of money from that, even if you sell out, which is weird though. You said she sold out, but well, it depends on how she published because with KDP, it's print mm -hmm. on demand. So they don't okay. have the book stocked anywhere. It's okay. just when somebody goes to buy it, they print it and ship it. Now, if she, let's say, went through Ingram Spark, which is another publishing platform, and Ingram Spark distributed the book to Amazon, then Amazon might have a couple on hand. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. yeah, she made it seem like it was so many and now they're gone or something. And like, but that's I, not the, you know, only method. And she's a young girl too. So obviously that's not the only method that she's going about. I just thought that was interesting. Um, like, oh, that's good for her. And you just hear, like I've heard some authors, um, you know, older people who are authors saying, you know, oh, that takes so much out. Don't go that route, you know. <laughs> and then some people are just like, oh, it's so easy. You just got to do it. So um, it's, I think it's good that you put a guide out so that to kind of give, you know, some direction and advice on that because there's so many options. And, you know, like you said, there's some cons out there and there's so many options. You want people not to waste money in this because it can exactly. be expensive and such. So, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. And then um, so that is a book or guide coming out through your Company. Yes, uh -huh. coming out hopefully within the next few weeks, but we're actually working on some big stuff right now. We're putting together a membership for new writers and aspiring oh. authors. So I'm okay. excited for that. Um, we do have a self-publishing guide out already. It's a free guide that tells you, that explains the mm -hmm. entire, the entire process of self-publishing. It's all in this guide. I took, I took all of the pain points, confusions and questions from the authors that I've worked with over the years, and I just answered them. 
in this book. So it's mm-hmm. like all of the facts, F A Q, the F A Q S, was it frequently asked questions? All of the frequently asked yes. questions of self publishing is essentially in this book. So that's free, and there's a little bit of information about uh, the pros and cons of different platforms. Okay, and people can get the guide that you have out now. Yes, you can. Um, I could give you the link, maybe, and you could put the link in the description or something. Yeah, that'd be great. Okay, so uh, we'll share that, guys. So um, there's information out there available for those who are interested in writing. I know a lot of people in the podcast circle have been toying around with the idea of putting a book together. Um, I know you shared in our podcast Clubhouse Room about, you know, the option of ghost writing um, or service. And so, yeah, I wanted you to share what that is for people who don't know what that means. Okay, so here's the analogy I like to use. Ghost writing is kind of like being a songwriter. Right? Can you hear me? I'm sorry, you froze. Yes. Okay. Okay. So ghostwriting is like being a songwriter. When you're writing a song for people, you're not typically the one to sing it. You write the song and you get somebody with an incredible voice to sing the song. Sometimes you get credited, sometimes you don't. But it's the singer that gets all the credit and all the glory and whatever, whatever, because he or she is doing the performance. Ghostwriting is essentially the same thing. So what we do is we work with authors who have a story to tell, but don't know how to tell it. Like they don't know how to write it. They don't know how to put it into words that make sense or sounds good and is marketable. So what we do then is we have a team of writers. We listen to your story. We let you tell us what it is that you want to get down on paper, or we read what you have if you have it written. And then we just kind of do a little bit of rewriting. We do, we rewrite it for you, we package it up, publish it and we're good to go. You're still listed as an author and we're never credited for it. Nobody ever even knows that it was ghostwritten. And Mm -hmm. a lot of people are like, oh, that's weird. I don't want to do that. You know, because they kind of like, you think of like rappers, ghostwriting for rappers, the same thing. Somebody wrote your bars for you and you, you're typically looked at like a fraud when you do that. Like, oh, you didn't even write your own rhymes. Like you had a ghostwriter or whatever. Yeah. But in the book space, it's not mm-hmm. frowned upon. Mo- like almost all celebrities that publish a book did not write their book. Like look at Will Smith. Will Smith published his book. I guarantee you he did not write that book. Actually, mm-hmm. he didn't. A guy did. And I can't remember that guy's name. It was like Jake or Jack, something like that. But he did not write that book. It, it, somebody wrote it for him. Yeah. He had a ghostwriter write mm-hmm. that. And he so, just shared his story because I, I thought it was cool. Like he has some YouTube videos where he's sitting around the table with all these people. And I guess they're like people who like, I don't know, were part of the book process for him. And he's like mm-hmm. talking about the story behind the stories or something. So um, that I think it's, you know, incredible that you offer that, that people is just, like you said, there's an idea in your head and you don't know how to put it down. Cause I you know someone in the podcast uh, space, I want to write a book, but I, I don't know how to write a book. It's like, how do you don't know how to write a book? You know how to write, you know, words yeah. down. But I get that because there's a way that you have to lay it out and things yeah. like that. And people are um, apprehensive about that. There's kind of a scary process for people. So it is because you're always concerned with, well, are pe- is people going to like what I have to say? Is it going to make mm-hmm. sense? Is people going to get it? You know, so there you start to self-doubt. There's a lot of self-doubt when it comes it to is. writing your book for the first time. And ghostwriting does help with that, but that's not the first step. I, I don't usually offer that to people right off the bat mm. because I, I like when authors have the ability to tell their story themselves. And so if I end up with an author who's like, I don't really know how to write, but I want to. Like, I want to write it, but I don't know how. Then we take them through the um, writing coaching program. So I have a program that teaches people how to write a book. So you have a story, but you don't know what to say. So Mm. we teach them how to actually get it down on paper. Now, this isn't like, you know, an English class. (laughs) <laughs> or anything like that like we're not in school but what the program does is first we first determine the type of author you are there are three types of authors you have the storyteller this is the person that can just talk like they can tell a good story but they can't get it on paper 
Then you have the imaginative author. That's an author whose story plays out like a movie in their head, but they can't express it in words. It just They see it, they, it's just there, it's playing in their mind. But then you have the writer, right? So the writer is a person that's always writing, always writing, always writing, but they're, they tend to be locked up in their own little cave and they're just mm. writing it out and it, they struggle to actually get it, uh, get the public to receive it. It's not very receptive or marketable. So mm-hmm. when we determine the type of author you are, from there, we'll be able to figure out, well, how do you write? And what do we need to change? If anything, a lot of times right. authors self-doubt and they're like, oh, I don't know if it's right. And then we read their work and they're like, you're tripping. This looks amazing. Like, yeah. what? So that, that often happens, but... We, we have different things set up for different people. The whole point of Misty Rose Publishing isn't to just create a product. That's not mm-hmm. what we do. We really transform an author and we really transform their words. We bring it to life for them. So I'm always, me and my team, we're always willing to work with people on whatever level they're on. Doesn't matter if you just had a book idea, if you already wrote it, or if you're an experienced writer or a seasoned author. It doesn't matter what, whatever level you're on, we will meet you where you're at. Awesome. Okay, so those are some great tools that are available for folks. And um, we don't wanna give them too much more because we want them to come to you for more. So how can people reach out um, to you know, find out about, we'll get the link for the book, but as far as just asking questions or to find out more. Yeah, so I'm on all platforms. Okay, not all, because I'm not on Twitter. But I'm on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, at Mystique Rose, P-S, M-Y-S-T-I-C-Q-U-E. Okay, not like the word, but like the middle name. M-Y-S-T-I-C-Q-U-E, Rose, P-S, on Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. And then, of course, I'm on Clubhouse as myself, Portia Mystique Steele. So you can just look up my name. And you'll find me. I'm always on Clubhouse. So you can just back channel me whenever. Um, we also have a website, www.mystiquerosepublishing.com. And literally Google, I guess. Like we're all over the place. So awesome. you'll find me. Okay, great. We'll have the links definitely for the website um, listed. And we thank you. Anything else to share? Uh, no, if you guys, I do want to say one thing. If you have a vision, if you even had an inkling or a thought about writing a book, do it. There's nothing stopping you. We do free consultations, so you can always just get into a room with me to talk. It's free to talk now. It's free to talk and get the information that you need because I'm always, I always, always, always love working with people who are willing to tell their story, willing to make a difference, or just willing to use their imagination. And if anybody, has an idea for a fiction book, please hit me up. I have been dying to publish mm. a fiction book. I haven't done it in quite a while. We've so, so many people nowadays are doing self-help books, memoirs, nonfiction, mm-hmm. all kinds of stuff. And I'm like, I want to go back to when I was a kid and I was reading the Hardy Boys or, you know, like I was yeah. a series of unfortunate events. I need a fiction book, okay? So if you guys have an idea for a fiction novel, hit me up. I would love to help you publish it. That sounds good, like another coldest winter ever type of story. Yes, please. Like, yeah. I need that. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. For sure. Anybody uh, who wants to work on a book, I'm here. Okay. Um, sounds great. Well, we appreciate having you. You're welcome here anytime, guys. Um, that was Portia, Mystique Steel. And we thank you guys for listening. Thank you.